is Mark Molnar with a special edition of Weather Northeastern's Blizzard coverage here on New England and extending into next week with another potential winter storm. Let's take a look at the precipitation amounts out west. Unfortunately, this is not good for the drought. It looks like we're going right back to our old pattern of the last couple to several years of the east getting most of your precipitation. Look at this from the deep south all the way up the east coast in the Appalachians looking rather wet. And most of this won't be in the form of liquid precipitation. It will be frozen. So let's take a look at the factors affecting this pattern over the next couple weeks. We have that huge ridge out west. As I said, this is not good news for the drought. This will continue to spread record highs up the coast and a lack of rainfall. Here in the east, lack of precipitation is not going to be had. As we can see here, this very, very... And I'm going to call it a dangerous trough here because it's going to actually tap into some polar vortexes here, which will actually pinwheel across the northern Ohio Valley into the northeast over the next couple weeks. And this could combine forces with some of these systems to create blizzard conditions and extremely dangerously cold wind chills. We have several good chances of heavy snow here from the south southeastern part of the U.S. up into the eastern seaboard here. So this is not looking very good if, as far as frigid temperatures are concerned because we've got quite the pattern here, to the tail of two extremes here. West coast, too warm and too dry. East coast, extremely frigid and extremely volatile when it comes to storms. Extreme storms could potentially be on the horizon here. So let's take a look at the factors affecting the weekend blizzard here, especially for eastern New England, but it will affect other areas as well into the northeast. So we take a look here. Dangerous winds. This is going to be one of the biggest impacts with this storm. As you can see here, along the eastern part of New England here, we could be looking at wind gusts from Boston, Providence, Cape Cod, all the way up the coast towards coastal New Hampshire and Maine and New Brunswick, all the way up to 70 to 80 mile per hour wind gusts, very likely heading inland towards Worcester, portions of interior New Hampshire, all the way westward towards Hartford and central portions of Long Island. We could be looking at Widespread gust of 50 to 60 miles per hour, even heading back further inland here, the Hudson River Valley towards New York City, northern New Jersey, the Poconos, Catskills, on up to the Capital District of New York. We could be looking at wind gusts on the order of 45 to 50 miles per hour, and even back towards the I-81 corridor of upstate New York and northeast Pennsylvania, we could be looking at wind gusts easily, 40 to 45 miles per hour. And you combine those really dangerously cold temperatures, especially Saturday night into Sunday, we could be looking at wind chills of 30 to 40 below zero in many areas. This is extremely dangerous. And you combine that with the blowing and drifting snow, extreme conditions, winter weather conditions will be likely along the New England coast here from Cape Cod, Boston, all the way up to New Hampshire and Maine and New Brunswick. Further westward here, even high into portions of central New England here, Hartford, all the way over towards portions of interior uh, Maine and New Hampshire and Vermont, and then moderate even back into uh, upstate New York here, northern New Jersey, the Poconos, Catskills, moderate likely, all the way up towards New York State here. But then you get into western New York, high risk also with uh, some lake enhancement here on the back end of the clipper and also the blizzard with some lake enhancement here as well. So we could be looking at higher accumulations and stronger wind speeds as well. So that being said, let's take a look at those snowfall accumulations. We've honed in on some very powerful snowfall accumulations, especially in eastern New England here with this blizzard. Cape Cod could be looking on the order of a solid 12 to 18 inches. Drifts on the order of up to 7 to 10 feet in many areas with that wind. Heading up towards Boston, uh, all the way up Providence, and then extending northward towards uh, the coastal New Hampshire, Maine, New Brunswick. We could be looking on the order of anywhere from a foot or more. But the important thing is once you get into just north of Boston into portions of Maine and coastal New Hampshire, we could be looking at a solid 16 to 24, even down East Maine, 24 to 32 inches all the way up into New Brunswick here. So this is 
quite the storm here. A lot of moisture to work with as this thing really bombs. Back towards Hartford, all the way out to Worcester, we could be looking at a solid 8 to 12 inches with locally higher amounts. Hudson River Valley could be on the verge of 6 to 8 to 4 to 6, depending on how far west this thing starts shifting and the moisture that gets involved. Most of the Hudson River Valley looking at 4 to 6. Poconos and Catskills, a good solid 4 to 6 out of this, locally higher to 8 inches on those higher mountain tops. And then here in the twin tiers of New York, Pennsylvania, 4 to 6. But we have lake enhancement off the Finger Lakes, Lake Ontario and Lake Erie. That could get us on the New York State Thruway, westward to Rochester and Buffalo. We could be looking on the order of a solid 8 to as much as 12 inches here in western New York and northern New York as well. So that being said, those are your snowfall accumulations, your hazards with this system. How about that next week system before we get into the surface maps? As I said, the southern states here from Arkansas, Tennessee, southern Kentucky, the, the Appalachians from northern Georgia, the western Carolinas, western Virginia, West Virginia, could be looking at a snow event at least a solid four to eight inches likely out of this system as this system pinwheels across the southern states here and it could make a beeline up the Atlantic seaboard here, the eastern seaboard. And if it were to do that, this could intensify quite a bit as it moves out of the southeast and moves up the east coast. And residents here in the northeast have to be wary of the Tuesday, Thursday time frame of next week because later this weekend could be the south Sunday night into early Monday. But up the east coast, if this system were to take the number one track, we could be looking at another east coast snowstorm. And it could be for a larger swath, not just for eastern portions of New England. So I'll have more details on that. It's a little bit too early to get into exact details. But that being said, let's get right into those surface maps for your Saturday. Look at this. Just a, actually a warm up here. Some areas getting into the 30s and portions of New York, Pennsylvania. We get that clipper moving through. So we got southerly winds. We also have some moisture to work with. So a good solid moderate snow here across New York, Pennsylvania, portions of northeastern Ohio into New England. We'll start to see those clipper snows moving in, but it's later on Saturday night we start to see the development of the low pressure system here just south of Long Island. And it, that's when it really starts to intensify on Sunday morning. We'll start to see more snow. But in the meantime, this clipper will be the main player on Saturday. Sunday, as I said, this system really starts to bomb right off Cape Cod, just east of Cape Cod and east northeast here conditions at this point travel is not recommended at all in most of New England and even in western New England we'll still be dealing with a tremendous amount of wind and blowing and drifting snow this will be light fluffy powdery snow so once the wind gets that and takes it into the air visibility will be reduced quite a bit and we'll even have some snow showers even back to the I-81 corridor here of upstate New York and northeast Pennsylvania, even some lake enhancement here in western New York continuing into Sunday. And look at these temperatures here. These temperatures are not really good to have during a blizzard because not only that, the wind chills that you have to factor in with this, very dangerous if you're caught out in this. And even back into portions of the northeast here in the mid-Atlantic, we're still looking with dangerously cold temperatures. Look at this, most of upstate New York not even getting to zero for a high from places like Binghamton, Albany, Rochester, Buffalo, Syracuse, and heading northward. It gets even worse once you head into southern Ontario and Quebec where highs may not even reach minus 5 to minus 10. This is not really great news for anybody that has any travel plans or you have to go outside and be exposed to this. Heading on into Monday, this system starts to wind up here into the northeast part of the United States. And of course, it takes a lot of moisture with it, but we still are left with some lake enhancement here into Monday. We start to see a little bit of uh, maybe some warmer temperatures, if you can call widespread teens warmer temperatures. But nevertheless, we'll take it because temperatures have been so cold as of late. Overnight lows will not be much better as things really still remain really quite cold at this point. And Tuesday, as I said here, we could be looking at increasing moisture from the south here. 
maybe making it as far north as the north central Appalachians here in the form of snow. So we'll continue to watch for that system towards the middle part of next week, early to middle part. I'll keep you updated. I'm going to have a five-day outlook for my hometown viewers from the upstate New York Susquehanna region into northeast Pennsylvania Susquehanna region from Binghamton, Scranton, and Elmira. Don't forget to like me on Facebook at MediaMark, subscribe to me on YouTube at MediaMark.com. It's Twitter at WX Northeastern and Google Plus at MediaMark. Here's that five-day outlook. Saturday. You're actually making it up close to 30 here in the Twin Tiers. Only because of a southerly wind ahead of the Clipper, you will end up with a solid 4 to 6 inches from noon on Saturday all the way through just after midnight on Saturday night into early Sunday morning. So you will have a lot of snow to deal with. Not too much, but enough to cause blowing and drifting once the winds really start to kick up after 8 p.m on Saturday evening. Heading on into Sunday, look at this, you don't even make it to zero for a high. This is terrible. Not a good day to be out at all. Wind chills will be down to 30, maybe as much as 40 below. Heading on into Monday, look at this, brutal. This is where we could see some of the colder valleys of the twin tiers of New York and Pennsylvania getting as low as negative 20. So be wary of that when you're trying to go to work on Monday morning. Heading on into Tuesday, we look for increasing clouds with a chance of snow later in the day with that system. Heading on into Wednesday, we could be dealing with that next system in the form of snow if it were to occur. So I'll keep you up to date on that here at Media Marks Weather Northeastern. That's going to do it here at Weather Northeastern.